Hi everyone, I'm Richard and I thought I'd add some more thoughts and analysis to my PlayStation 4 Pro review. We were somewhat limited in what we could do with just four to five days with the machine and I didn't get around to including my thoughts on the machine itself beyond a look at the base configuration of the hardware. Well, first up, I want to talk about power consumption. Now, there were a lot of worries about this when it transpired that the rated power for the machine was in the region of 310 watts. Now, that's not great when our benchmarking PC with a more capable NVIDIA GTX 1070 paired with an overclocked i7 is drawing around 260 watts from the wall. And of course, if you have a large power drawer, that usually translates into a lot of heat too, not to mention a hit to your electricity bill. Well, to begin with, all I'd say there is don't panic. PS4 Pro doesn't draw 310 watts during typical usage or indeed anything close to it. Okay, well, I'm going to start with the basics. Just running the front end here with the machine online and a disk installing gives us a 75 watt power draw on both the PS4 Pro and the new CUH2000 Slim. And that's lower on both counts than a launch unit. With the systems downloading a game and not using the Blu-ray drive, consumption drops 4 watts on the Pro and the slim and actually 9 watts on the launch PS4 so maybe the drive itself is now more efficient on the later PlayStation models. Next up a particular bugbear for many rest mode. Now this is a really useful mode in that the PS4 continues to download stuff while the machine is supposedly powered down to all intents and purposes. Only well it's not really. The launch PS4 model comes in at a remarkable 73 watts, dropping down to 46 on the slim. However, the Pro is still too high at 58 watts. I mean, I guess it is a lower power mode as such, but that's a whole lot of juice for doing, well, not a lot really. Okay, so next up, I decided to test a standard PlayStation 4 game, one that isn't Pro patched. I chose Project Cars because I can share replay data across all three units and test the exact same processing load. Interesting results here actually. 140 watts on the launch PS4 dropping to just 84 on the slim. That's a 40% drop. Now the Pro's back compat works by dropping clock speeds and turning off half of the GPU but that doesn't result in efficiency on par with the Slim. 104 watts here, a 25% drop from a launch PlayStation 4. Okay, so finally, the big one. I took Infamous First Light and played it on all three systems with the unlock frame rate engaged. But crucially, I played the PlayStation 4 Pro version in its 4K mode or rather 1800p checkerboard. The results, well, they're actually quite fascinating. We're looking at a 155 watt power draw on the PlayStation 4 Pro, dropping to 80 watts on the PS4 Slim, which is obviously running in base mode. That kind of makes sense. After all, they're similar processors in terms of fabrication, but the Pro is around twice as powerful as the Slim. So with that in mind, a 2X increase in power draw is perfectly understandable, but, it's the comparison with the launch unit that proves fascinating. The same game sequence sees a 148 watt consumption result. Nowhere near as good as the Slim, but very, very close to the Pro, which is obviously running a 2x more powerful GPU. So overall then, I'm not unduly concerned about power consumption on the Pro. It outstrips performance of a launch PS4 with only a small increase in the amount of energy required. And obviously there's a huge graphical upgrade in terms of resolution at least. However, I still think rest mode really, really needs some work. But the next question is pretty straightforward. If we've got the ballpark same power consumption requirements to the launch PlayStation 4, do we have to put up with the same levels of noise? Now, based on our measurements, the Pro can hit around 55 decibels, louder than the Slim for sure, and about on par with the old C chassis PS4 in certain scenarios. But more bothersome to me at least was the pitch of the noise. It's similar to the standard PS4 here, and the pitch alters as the fan spins up and down. Now I'm not a fan of the acoustic profile, and I consider it one of the weaker parts of the Pro, but if the launch PS4 didn't bother you, I don't think this will either. Okay, so that's where we're at for now. This is a 150 to 160 watt console. It can get loud, but it's no worse than any PS4 that's gone before despite its increased power level. And it seems that the larger surface area of the machine is perhaps better for dissipating heat. 
My unit here tops out at around 42 Celsius, but remember mileage may vary between units. Okay, so I'll be back soon with more pro analysis, but in the meantime, thanks for watching and do consider supporting our Patreon if you value our work and fancy seeing 4K video the way it's meant to be seen. But for now, that's all. Thanks for watching.